Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely Victorian paper cone favor. And it's so easy to make and you can make a ton of these up for very little money using supplies from our sponsor Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com. So the probably the main element of this is the paper doily, but doilies can be a little bit fragile. This is the six inch round paper doily and I'll have a link in the video description. So to make them a little bit more um, substantial without ruining the daintiness of the paper cone, we're going to use some vellum paper. Paper. And this is some that I had in my stash. It has a pretty light purple polka dot on there, and I thought it'd be really pretty for Easter. So what I'm going to do is lay my uh, doily down kind of as a guide, and then I am just going to put this template on top and use that uh, to kind of trace it. Or I can even trace around my doily, actually. I'm going to go around this just because I know I'll get a little bit smoother of a circle. I just want to make sure that I am going to have um, enough of material to make a nice strong cone. Now I'm going to use my scrapbooking scissors and you probably have these from back in the day of scrapbooking and I'm just cutting in from the edge and I'm going to cut along that edge but I'm going um, underneath it so that I don't see my pencil lines. And you could use um, a pinked edge, whatever you want. I am kind of just going off the edge there so that I have plenty of material. It's a little lopsided, but it's going to be fine. Now I'm going to put my doily on top. See, this printing on this is about the same either side, so it really doesn't matter what side I have where, and it's going to be pretty either way because you're going to see it from the inside and the outside. I do want to make sure that my paper doily has the embossed side out. So you want the prettiest side to face down on the paper, and then we're going to just kind of lay this on top and just take a look. All right, so now I want to secure that in place, and I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue for that. Okay, I know you're thinking hot glue on vellum, you're going to see, but you're not going to see it on the back side through the doily. So that's that's pretty much, I'm just worried about what's going to see, what's going to show. Now I am going to trim these little edges sticking out a little bit with my scallop scissors. There we go because I don't want any pokey, pokey weird bits there. There we go. And now we're just going to form that up into a nice cone. See? There we go. Now, you don't need to make it super tight at the bottom. You can, but if it's not, don't worry, because I'm going to show you how our treats are going to go in there in a little bit. It doesn't really matter. So once I've rolled that up and I'm happy with the way it's placed, I'm going to very carefully add some hot glue. So you want to be careful because your doily is going to have holes in it because it's a doily. So you want to make sure you don't burn yourself. I'm actually going to flip that around the other side because this side has a little bit more vellum underneath there. I like to try to secure it where there's some vellum just so that there's less likelihood that I'm going to burn myself. And if you want to use tacky glue, I recommend that you um, maybe get like a, see if you can find like a, paper clip or something you can get in there and pinch it shut so it can kind of be a year after wait for it to dry basically so you know so you don't have to hold this for an hour you could use a paper clip or something okay so I'm just holding that while that sets now there's a hole in there that's fine it's not gonna be a problem I, I even like that little bit of vellum poking out the bottom so not a big deal now for hanging thread I actually like this ribbon this is a kind of got a beautiful vintage print on it it's from paper mart I think they have it in three different colors but I love this moss color because it's just so versatile and I'm just gonna give that a snip and I am going to put that right in there so that's where that's gonna go I am gonna just kind of peek apart my cone now I could have put this on before probably would make more sense to put that on before but this way I'll know I have it centered up I'm gonna grab my ribbon so I've got it pretty so pretty facing the inside because if you were to hang this on like the back of a chair or something you'd want you'd want to be able to hang it like that so you see the pretty Okay, don't worry about that glue because we are going to put a little button there. I've got my box of purple buttons. I like to store my things by um, by color, and that way when I'm working with like a certain a certain theme or whatnot, I can just grab the things that match. That works for me anyway. A little tip for you might work for you. I like to share when I have a tip that I think might be helpful, and then I think I'll just put a little one on the back as well. And the thing I like about that is that. Um, by gluing something on the back, I have no idea what, oh, it came right off, something on my table. Um, I like it when I glue something on the back because I'll be gluing through those little holes in the doily so I know it's going to be actually really locking my layers down. It's not like this has to last 100 years, but it'd be nice if it made it through a party or two. 
Okay, so we've got that part done. Now for embellishing, I like to use Baker's Twine. I mean, talk about a classic supply. They've, it's been really hot the last few years, and it doesn't really show any signs of becoming any less popular, um, but it's a classic element, and it's always going to be in style. Uh, these big spools, I think the 240 yard rolls are at Paper Mart for under 10 bucks, so you really can't beat it. I think they're about 16 to $20 for a roll that big at the scrapbook suppliers, so just so you know. I'm going to put a little dab of glue here in the front, and again, it can go through the holes there and make a little bit stronger of a bond. And I'm going to put this little label I punched out on top. What I did was I just used my paper punch and some patterned scrapbook paper. Use whatever you have. This would even be really pretty if you had like an old book page, an old book you craft out of. You know, the ones they're going to throw away at the library and you save. Those are really great for that. And you could always just uh, tint it a color with a little chalk or something. Um, so now I'm going to wrap this around a couple times. And the reason I want to use a scalloped punch is because it'll help keep the string in place while I'm wrapping. So it won't want to slide off on me, which is just a little, hopefully, handy trip, trick for you. Okay, now I can tie that down. It's going to be difficult to do this if your item is not scalloped because it's going to want to slip off. Or if you have something with a little notch on it, or you can even like cut a little slit on the side, just like a little slit with your scissors and it can, and your, your twine can catch in there. Then you can fuss it around if you want. You can spread out the strings, make it look pretty. Now I'm going to put a button on because I think that will uh, look nice over the knot and you can use whatever size you want, whatever, whatever color you like. I like that purple one. And that will also uh, keep my thread, my string, my twine from coming off, which is a little trick of the trade. <laughs> and I've had these in my stash for a while, just these little, little paper roses. I thought they'd be kind of pretty. Put one of these in here. It's always fun to go through your supplies. Like, you know, when you store by color, it can be really helpful because I'm like, well, I want to use green and purple. What can I find? And when you look through those supplies, you'll find combinations that you might not have realized you even had. These are little pearls, little uh, half pearls. And I think they're really pretty anytime you're going to do anything spring or Easter or wedding-y. So I'm going to put a couple of those on there. Now, as a finishing touch, we're going to do something about the hole in the bottom and actually add a little bit of flare while we're at it. So what I've done is cut a little piece of this purple tool off, and you can overlap it a couple times if you want a bulkier look. That's totally fine. And I'm just going to push it down in there to fill in the bottom. You could alternately wrap a bunch of like um, coated almonds or other treats, like maybe foil eggs or something in there, and um, place that right in the cone as well for a delightful little treat. I think it looks great. I think it would look beautiful on a plate, laying across a plate, hanging on the back of a chair, hanging on a doorknob. It's just so lovely um, and easy to make and affordable too, using supplies from our sponsor, Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com. Packaging for less.